Hi everyone, welcome. I'm going to provide a climate update, a look back at the past winter and some of the recent climate extremes and anomalies. We'll look at also the climate trends and an outlook for the summer coming up. This is Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service. The photos on here are for some heavy rain events we had in December. Okay, let's take a look at the summary and key points. Another dry year for California, especially the deserts and the mountains. As little as 40% of average to as much as 70% of average along coastal San Diego County. Now this is year number three for Northern California, year two for Southern California. Temperatures this past winter were also milder, warmer than average, mainly for the mountains and deserts. December was much above average precipitation statewide and much cooler than average with several cold storms. But we also had three atmospheric rivers that affected Southern California. Then it shut off the driest period on record for much of California, the northern two thirds between January and March 2022. Now this is on the heels of summer 2021 that was much above average for temperatures and that affected areas, especially in the mountains and deserts. But recall 2020, the prior summer was also record warm and more to the coast. We had 25 Santa Ana wind events since September 2021. That's slightly above average. So all of this, the lack of precipitation, the warm temperatures, Santa Ana winds have critically stressed our fuels. The dead fuel moisture is critically low. We'll take a look at that. Uh, we also see live fuel moistures have cured out quickly this spring. And even though we did have an early and fast green up. Now, what are we expecting? Late spring, summer expected to be warmer than average. More heat waves, especially July and August, but also potentially in June. Now, precipitation could be above average in parts of Southern California, especially the desert southwest and in Arizona. That is the potential for an above average monsoon. Now, last year, if you recall, we had a pretty healthy monsoon, especially on coastal areas where we had eight different lightning events. All right, what's the weather pattern been? Northwest flow has been dominating this winter since last October all the way through April. The black line is the average jet stream. The red and orange shaded area, that's not normal. That's an anomaly above average as a block in the Pacific jet stream that is causing the jet stream to remain during the entire winter on average to our north and east and also creating very windy conditions for our deserts. Not a good pattern year two now for improving drought. Now, if we look at the summer of 2021 and compare it to 2020, we can see it was different but the dominant theme was upper level high pressure, much warmer than it should be in the Eastern Pacific, a block continuing from winter to summer. And then the four corners high shifted much further north than it should be. So in 2020, that shut off the monsoon with northerly flow. But in 2021, it shifted so far north into the Pacific Northwest on average, and it brought that enhanced easterly monsoon flow. Now let's take a quick look, 2021, the red shaded areas, those are warmest on record, simply put. And you can see it made it all the way to coastal areas in parts of California, but dominated across the mountains and deserts. So 2021 was much above average record warm in the red shaded areas. Main areas that were spared were the immediate coastal areas of Southern California. If we look the prior year, 2020, we saw the same theme, mountains and deserts in the deep red shaded area, record warmth for the summer. Now the difference in 2020 is it made it all the way to the coast, especially Northern California, but even parts of Southern California were in the top 10 for hottest. This also led to unprecedented wildfire conditions across California. This chart, 2020, 2021, half of the acres burned in those two years alone. And those were record hot years as shown. Now our deficits, uh, precipitation, depending on where you are in Southern California, we're running below average and our rainy season is pretty much over with. San Diego over three inches below average, Riverside over four inches, 
Ramona near five inches. It's also our mountains such as Idlewild, six inches. Now our deserts, this is back to back years with very low precipitation for our deserts as shown here in Palm Springs. If you look at the water year, this is a map showing since October 1st, the red shaded areas are less than 70% of average, dark shaded red or less than 50% of average, and that includes our deserts of Southern California. You can see the temperatures this past winter were mild, uh, mainly for the mountains and the desert areas, an ongoing trend in those areas. If we look since January 1st, precipitation shut off this past winter, it was record dry all the way through April 1st. Very little precipitation, except a little bit more compared to the rest of the state in San Diego County. What was remarkable was the snowpack went from 160% of average on January 1st down to 18% of average in late May. Between January and March, the red shaded areas indicate the driest on record. It wasn't just Northern California. We were close in Southern California where January and February were the second driest on record for Riverside and Santa Ana. In fact, more snow occurred during this period, January through March in Mount Laguna in San Diego County than it did in Mammoth. Okay, we mentioned earlier the stress on the fuel. The dead fuel moistures are shown here, and they currently in the Southern California mountains are running right at record low levels, record low levels. So that's not good, especially with heat waves or any windy situations if we do get a fire start. The energy release shows the same thing, a lot of potential in the mountain areas due to the stress in the fuels. And we already know that the live fuel, especially the grasses, the fine fuels have cured out. So Southern California mountains are stressed with a lot of potential for significant fire growth if there is any ignition. Here's a look at the grasses in mid-May. You can see the slopes have cured out. You'll see this around your area too. Now is the time to think about defensible space. It will be needed and it is important for preventing fire spread. The photos below are the burn scar images that I took of the coastal fire that occurred east of Laguna Beach. All right, let's take a look at the drought monitor. We update this every week. This is a national effort, multi-agency. Drought conditions are not improving. Over this past winter, we did have some improvement in December, but overall on the right-hand side, you can see some areas have actually gotten worse, such as the deserts or parts of central California. Slight improvement in the mountains, such as Sierra Nevada, where they did receive 70, 80% of average precipitation, but the snowpack was dismal by the time we got into April and May. So on the left-hand side is the latest drought monitor. You can see the D3 and 4 conditions have expanded in central and southern areas of California. What's the outlook? So for early June, well, we do expect the significant warming coming up this week as June starts, but we expect a cool down for next weekend. And so between June 4th and 8th, a unusual cool system will settle and bring precipitation back to the Pacific Northwest and cool conditions across that area, um, coming out to about average with temperatures. Now, when we shift a little further into June, this is important to note, after June 6th, it looks like the pattern shifts and we get building upper level high pressure from Texas to Southern California. So that could spell above average and warmer than average temperatures and potential heat wave for Southern California. That is the period between June 6th and 12th. Now, when we look further into the middle of June, we see again a roller coaster shift where we cool down in mid June across the Pacific Northwest and the potential for average conditions returning for the middle of June after that potential heat wave with the heat then shifting or retreating back to Texas again. If we look at the summer, the outlook for the summer, July through September, overall the West, because of upper level high pressure shifting further north than usual, is expected to be warm, warmer than average, means more heat waves as we go 
from July all the way through September. A little bit of good news is that desperately needed the Southwest could have above average monsoon, but with that brings dust storms, flash floods, and even some danger from lightning for fire weather. So the bottom line is warmer than average for the entire West and Southwest and the potential for above average monsoon, some of that spilling into Southern California, depending on exactly how that upper level pattern we talked about earlier sets up. What about a sneak peek for next winter? Well, La Nina conditions are continuing. This is the second year right now. We have three years of drought for Northern California, two years of drought for Southern California, and the initial outlook is not promising. In fact, we are going for below average precipitation and warmer than average temperatures for the following winter into 2023. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully this is helpful for you, for your planning and understanding of our climate extremes and providing an outlook uh, from June all the way through next winter.